time really does catch up with you. I have been saying for weeks that I would prepare my plants for overwintering, but never got around to doing it. And then I saw the weather report of a freeze warning in a few days, and it became a race against time to get all this stuff done. First were the bell peppers. I planned a two-prong approach of attempting to propagate cuttings and overwintering in ground. Both approaches required me to cut back the bell peppers. Once that was done, I dipped my cuttings into growing compound and set them aside so I could tackle the big job of making a mini greenhouse hotbed for the long beds. But as I was outside, I wanted to check the progress of my compost bucket. And while I was at it, the progress of the soil I laid down in the new beds. Everything looks good. I mentioned in another video that I'd been gardening for years and this year got serious about what I didn't know. That said, I also had to realize that not everything I did in the past was wrong. I had set up a mini greenhouse in the past and it did work, but now time was a factor. So off to my woodworking shop. I started out by buying furring strips that are one by twos that would be heavy enough to hold the frame in place on windy days and, more important, are cheap. I figured 20 would allow me to make four frames to cover both long beds. What I found interesting is that exterior screws cost almost half the cost of the furring strips. I spent about $30 for the wood and 11 for the screws. But you gotta do what you gotta do. I was racing against time. The frames would be 48 inches long and 41 inches wide to fit snugly into the four by eight long beds. So cutting a set of lengths for each frame was the first order of business. And then on to joining those pieces to make the box frame. I used this edge clamp to speed the process, but if you lay the pieces on the floor, it accomplishes the same thing. I added a middle strip for extra stability. And now I have the two box frames ready to be joined by legs.
Notice I screwed in the legs on the same side that joined the frame to avoid hitting previous screws. I did put one screw on the other side, but getting one screw in without hitting another is easier than trying to do two because I was dealing with a very narrow space. All the while, I was getting weather announcements that the frost was arriving a day early. And the frost advisory is in effect. I just kept telling myself to keep working. I simply needed to sand the edges to prevent tears and I would be ready to do it all over again to make a second frame. Now comes the fun part, adding the covering to the frame. I got two male plastic from Walmart that was nine feet wide and 24 feet long. It was reasonably priced and heavy enough to withstand the weather, yet fairly easy to work with. It did take a little work, but I got it done ahead of the sun going down and freezing temperatures. And here is the greenhouse hotbed. As I stated before, it does work to provide warmth for the plants during cold snaps in my mild climate. Also, I know some of you are wondering why I didn't slant the frames for water runoff, but I wanted top room, and the two mill covering is strong enough to hold water if it rains. And, worst case, if I know it's going to rain or will be too hot, I simply lift the frames to allow air in or water to flow off. But more importantly, it allows me to grow in place over the winter months to get a jump on spring. I have a few other ideas for overwintering, but right now, I need a nap. See you next time.